Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike. Thanks for spending a moment of your day with me. I really appreciate it. Today, we are reviewing Prey. And I'll go have some hay. I just may lay by the bay. I'm a hologram, by the way. This is the future. I'm not here right now. I'm on vacation somewhere. Hopefully on a beach. Hopefully it's not fucking raining. And, you know, just having a good time. But, this is the future in technology. And I recorded this earlier. You know who doesn't have technology is this movie on multiple accounts. Uh, Prey takes place like 300 years ago. It's this Comanche tribe who comes across a predator. Predator gets dropped off by a spaceship in the mountains and it's like your mom dropping you off for soccer practice. He just tucks and rolls out of the goddamn ship and he's here and he's ready to party. Stop by sometime for a beer. And this Comanche tribe is out there just living their best life, doing their thing, hunting CGI, poorly CGI'd animals. And the Predator goes out there to hunt them one by one. And there's, there's this female who's a part of the Comanche tribe and she wants to become a hunter. She's good at medicine. She's good at all this stuff. But she wants to be a hunter solely for the fact that everybody keeps telling her she can't. Which is something that I think a lot of us with certain personalities can really understand and empathize with. And, and that's kind of her plight. So when she goes out to hunt shit, she happens to see some weird alien shit happening in the woods. And she's telling everybody, like Dr. Loomis telling Haddonfield that it happened. And everybody's like, oh, shut up. You can't hunt. You're a girl. Stop it. So eventually she says, I've had enough of your bullshit. Don't think I'm make, not making a mental note of all your shit. And she goes out to bag her predator. And what happens? When you fuck around, you find out. And not only does she find out, but several groups of people find out too. And the predator gets to fucking go, Andrew WK, when it's time to party, we will party hard on these people. And yeah, this is basically the first predator movie because it predates Arnold um, and all that shit. Now, first off, before I get into the review of this, let me say that I like the movie overall. I think that there's a lot of hyperbole going on around it, but I like the movie overall. But what I'm about to say, it's going to sound like I don't like it. So stay to the end. The worst part about this movie is that it's just it's one of the film's only problems, but it's the size of Mount Fuckington, which is a really big mountain, in case you didn't know that. That people fuck on. <laughs> the movie, aside from Predator, aside from Predator, which is pretty important, looks like shit in every way. The animals get it the worst. I mean... There's like a snake, a wolf, and a bear, and some other shit. Holy shit. I mean, it looks like the sci-fi channel made the fucking Jungle Book. It's so bad. It's so bad. And I just don't understand. We just watched on Yellowstone. They, they use wolves. You know what I mean? Like, movies since the fucking 80s and probably before that have used animals in their movies. I don't know why nobody will go the extra mile of just, hey, we got an important scene here. Let's train a, let's get a trained animal to do it. You know what I mean? Those animals need fucking work too, pal. I don't understand why we would, if it looks like that, let's go get a real fucking snake and shit. You know what I mean? Is it just laziness? Is it money? I, I don't know. But that was that was pretty inexcusable for uh for a movie. And it's not it doesn't just stop with the animals there. That's just one level. You can get over that. It's like it's a fucking animal, whatever. Uh, it does take you completely out of the film. But that's not all, Jim. The whole thing is overly CG'd. The entire fucking thing. Aside from the Predator, who I'll get to in a second. Uh, the kills are just CG blood splatter every single time. And it's uh, so unfortunate because some of the kills are so good and inventive. But it's just <laughs> every time. And it looks like a video game. Or it looks like a really well-funded fan film. Or one of those video on demand horror films that you watch that they just, man, they're doing the best they can with their budget. Uh, like scenes where they'll use a lot of smoke to cover up what's going on around. And you could just tell that they're just trying to make that set work. Things like that in this movie and just the computer animated graphics, uh, whatever the right word is for it, it was just subpar. It looked bad and it ruined some really great scenes. It got to the point where I was like, man, this is so disappointing because this shit is awesome. Like this is a really cool moment and I'm just taken back because every time they zoom in on something or every time uh, uh, an axe goes in somebody's body and that, and that fake blood goes everywhere, it's just so disappointing and bad. And nothing against fan films or video on demand films at all. Uh, they, that's where you get some of the most original work these days, and I love those things. But we're talking about a sequel to The Fucking Predator. We're talking about a huge goddamn franchise owned by Disney. I don't know if it's a money issue or, or directorial issue, but if it's a money issue, then that's that's just fucking disappointing, man. Uh, and I keep seeing people say, this movie should be on the big screen. Uh, this is why it's not on the big screen. I have to disagree. If this, I watched this on a computer screen and was just like, oh, jeez. If it looks Xboxy on there, what's it going to look like on a big screen? That's exactly why, because they did not fund it correctly or there was issues with the FX team or whatever. But why on earth would you not get 
uh, practical effects artists. I know you can't do everything practical. I understand that. Like, I, I know the spaceship, they, they've done it before, but I know the spaceship is going to be CG and all that. But like when it comes to a man standing in front of another man murdering the shit out of him, you should be able to do that without CG. You should be able to do that with a practical effects team. And it was just really disappointing to see it that way. And it just takes you out of the film so hard. And moving on to the positives, the Predator himself. I don't know if the whole budget went into the Predator or what was going on there, but Predator looks pretty fucking cool, man. Just his whole, just look, just dead on look. Uh, the dude who played him uh, actually wore a suit. Uh, Dane uh, Deliegro, I I'm probably saying your name wrong. Sorry about that if I am. I would love to have him on the show sometime, by the way, to talk to him about how all this worked. Because it wasn't just the way it looked. And the Predator before, like in the last movie, The Predator, he had, there was terrible CG going on. And he looked uh, he looked cool at certain times. And that massive, gigantic T-Rex fucking Predator. Uh, and he looked cool sometimes, but other times it was far too CG'd. Now, the Predator here is one of the better looking Predators we've gotten in the franchise. He has a really cool look to him. I love what they did with him. It's very brutal, very mean, very visceral. I love this Predator and what they actually did with them. That being said, it does suffer from the same problem a lot of Predator movies suffer from, and that's the Predator seems this unstoppable force that no one can possibly fight with until he runs into his kryptonite, which is the, the lead character. <laughs> um, you know, what made the first Predator work so well is Arnold is... He looks like the guy we would send to fight an alien. Like, pick your best, and we'd be like, that fucking guy... Go fight the alien for us. So it makes sense and they can rumble in the jungle. You know what I mean? I'm so sorry for saying that. So they do, when it comes down to the final face-off between Nauru and Predator, they have, to, they have to resort to some tricks to make it kind of believable. But overall, they do a pretty good job of it. Either way, you still can sense the Predator like holding back a little bit because this is our final girl that he's fighting against. And speaking of which, Amber Midthunder, our final girl, she did a fantastic job. She's charismatic. Uh, she was great in the action scenes. Those were believable as hell. I believe that she was doing these things. Uh, I liked her character a lot, and I, I look forward to seeing her and other stuff. She's a badass and very worthy Predator final girl. There's something in the mechanics of our final fight scene that are a little bit confusing to me, and I'm not sure work all the way, uh, but someone will have to explain that to me because when you watch it i'm like i don't know if that checks out for me and there's a couple tiny gripes i have with the predator like it seems like his what he can do versus what he can't do it gets a little bit confusing here and there for me certain spots i'm like wait that doesn't carry the two i don't understand uh but those, these are tiny tiny gripes overall the predator himself fucking rules the final girl fucking rules and and the movie does a great job of not trying to overcomplicate the plot that was a main problem with the predator uh with predators it 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 convolutes things and predator is about two people fucking in the woods i mean fighting in the woods i think i ordered the wrong predator movie uh but no it's about predator versus prey it's about hunting it's about a face-off and i feel like this this movie got that right narratively they got it right it's very very simple plot that's what i think predator is and should be about and they got back to those roots and i really appreciate it there is a side story going on with this group that shows up and i just thought it was kind of weird and strange but in the end of the day it's more flesh and again super inventive awesome kills uh whoever wrote that and storyboarded this i bet it's pretty disappointing because they came up with some really cool stuff and it just doesn't look that great on the screen that being said the predator being such a badass kind of makes up for a lot of that prey for me is going to be a 7 out of 10 it is one of the better predator sequels i don't know there may be a predator uh ranking up tomorrow i want to know what your all's predator ranking is what is your favorite predator movie other than the original like what is your second place predator movie because for me i'll tell you right now a few of these movies are just neck and neck with each other for me. All the all the sequels kind of float this kind of sort of shitty, you know, like strange 6.5, 7 territory. This one's a 7 for me. Um, and I think people will really enjoy it. And I definitely recommend that you watch it if you're a Predator fan. If for nothing else, just The Predator and, and Amber Mid-Thunder, um, it's worth it in that regard. So I definitely recommend The Predator. Check that shit out on Hulu this week, and I'm going to check out now. I love your all's fucking faces so much. Uh, if you're new here, please click the subscribe button and the bell because YouTube doesn't like our fucking potty mouths. So if you don't, they won't tell you when we make a video. So you really got to hit that bell, and sometimes they won't then. Um, but we have tons of Halloween ends, Scream 6 updates, movie reviews, all that shit if you're new here. So please subscribe, uh, and uh, we love your all's fucking faces. And if you miss us while we're gone, we got a fuck ton of content in the, not my penis, but in the Patreon on uh, down below uh, almost 100 movie commentaries extra videos you fucking name it tons of cool shit in the patreon uh, i'm gonna go i love your all's fucking faces i hope you guys have an amazing day and um do it do it now what are you gonna do on october 31st what are you gonna do on october 31st
Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits, cause he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you wanna know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you fire. Ooh, I said God damn. A lot of people don't know the darkness that goes inside their hearts. I said God.